Alright guys, welcome back. Yes, we finally have the audio we've been waiting for. It took a little longer than expected. My microphone that I ordered didn't come in for a long time, but now we've got it. Because I know a lot of guys were asking for a video with audio, so that I can kind of explain more in depth the process and what's going on. So, here we go. Today, we're going to go over how we tie one of our favorite bluegill patterns for a swim jig. I'll link all the products that we're using down in the description, so don't worry about trying to follow along as we go. Um, I'll link everything down below for you. So we're going to start off, this is the Poison Tail Jig Mold from Do It Molds, and I have a must-add wide gap hook in it. Um, we're going to start tying with a 210 denier flat wax nylon, it's what we use for 99% of our jig builds. So you're going to start off, you need a base layer. And you just want to lay the thread down, go across it. What I like to do is go all the way across, pull it back over, and come back across. You really only need to go across it once. I like to do it twice just for kind of peace of mind. Once I get to this point, I'll use some of this Loon water-based head cement. You really don't need to do this either. Um, I've never actually had a jig come untied. I just like to do it for peace of mind. I'll use that. Sometimes you guys might see me use this hardhead clear. The hardhead is a little bit harder and stronger, but you do have to be a little more careful. If you get any on your skirt material, it will show up when it dries. This water-based head cement will not. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to use this burnt orange skirt on the bottom. This is seven strands for no reason other than seven is my favorite number. What you want to do when you're tying these, so the end of this skirt material is solid, and then you can see where it actually starts to separate. What I like to do is put this solid portion that I'm going to cut off just past the end of the hook, because that's the length that I like to tie most of my jigs. What you do is you put, what I do is I put a couple loose wraps around it, because being loose, you still, you're able to move it around, kind of center it, put it wherever you want. If you push your thumb down right over where the thread goes over the skirt, it'll actually help level it out if there's any pieces of skirt that are stacked on top of each other. Another thing when you're building colors is the first color, if you're doing multiple layers, the first color that you put down, once you fold the skirt back over, that's going to be the color that's on the outside and will be most visible. So we've got our seven strands of burnt orange on the bottom. The next color we're going to use is Magic Crawl Blue Swirl. So you can see if I hold it like that, it's very brown. And if I turn it, you can see that blue highlight. I'm going to use 10 strands of this on each side. I'm just going to line both of those tabs up. Again, I'll do a couple loose wraps. I'll spread it out where I want it, make sure it's all good, and then start to tighten it down. We'll take our other 10, put them on the other side. Wrap it around, spread it, make sure it's all where you want it. Snug it down. And if you ever start to snug stuff down, sometimes as you tighten it, it'll start to pull the skirt. If it adjusts some way you don't like, just unwrap it a little bit before you tie it all off and readjust. On the top, we're going to put 10 strands of just solid black. The tops of a lot of fish are actually very, very dark. Um, so I like to throw a very dark material. I don't always use black. Sometimes I'll use like a black and green like striped material. But for this one, I like just solid black. So once we get all that on, that's what I consider like my base layer. I have a good solid color build all the way around it. But if you just use like one layer of skirt material, it's a pretty thin skirt. I like to make this one a little bit thicker and bulkier because bluegill are a little bit fatter than like a shad. So I like to add a little bit more skirt material. So I'm going to use, I, use, I call this an overlay. This is called Summer Craw. I'm going to use a full tab, which is 22 skirt or 22 strands. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on, throw my loose wraps over, and I'm going to spread this color around the entire jig. 
so I want it to go all wrap all the way around it. Another thing when you're rotating your vise, make sure you're rotating it in a direction that you're not going to untie your thread and everything fall apart. That definitely has happened when I was learning how to do all this. Alright, so I got my green all the way around it. Now I'm just going to tighten everything down. Just throw some good tight wraps all the way around it. And then once I get to this point, what I like to use are these little hair clips. You can get them from Amazon, Hobby Lobby, probably anywhere that has anything. <laughs> Um, I'm going to throw this clip on there and then they make a whip finishing tool that you can use to hook onto your thread and wrap it around to tie it off but I feel like skirts that are like full skirt length material the whip finishing tool is kind of a nuisance so I like to just use my fingers I will wrap this around five times three four and five after the fifth time cinch it down make sure you keep it on the thread sometimes it'll try to get over and pinch the skirt which is not bad but it just doesn't look very pleasing i'm going to do this again five more times you really only need to do this once i think that's five lost count i you really only need to do that once again i like to do it just for peace of mind i know that it's not going to come off you're going to trim that little tag in Make sure you don't clip any of your skirt material when you're doing that. I'm going to flip it over to where that tag end is on top. Again, use a little bit of this water-based head cement. Put a little bit right there where it's tied. And you can see where it kind of looks like milk that you're putting on there. I don't know if you can see that. But it will dry very clear. On all materials, thread, silicone, living rubber, whatever you're tying your jigs with, that water-based head cement will dry very clear and won't leave any sort of residue when you're done. Once you get it all tied off, you're going to take that solid portion of the skirt that I was talking about earlier, you're going to hold that, and you're just going to cut it off. I don't worry about the length of the skirt at this point. I just cut off as little of material as I need to to free up all of those strands. And then at the very end, we'll trim both sides together to the final length. I will say I highly recommend investing in a good pair of scissors. Uh, I think these are only like 20 bucks, they're the Dr. Slick brand, but I use a cheap like $3 pair of scissors for the longest time. It makes a huge difference in being able to cut the material nice and clean and smooth. So if you're gonna spend a little bit of money on anything, definitely get a vise that you can rotate and a good pair of scissors. That's going to make everything easier. Once you get it done, you take it off, you're going to flip it over to where all the skirt material comes down on one side. And you'll see what I was talking about earlier. You've got that magic crawl blue on the outside. The black on the outside, the blue and the orange on the bottom, but you can still see that green coming through in the middle. And then once we get everything where we want it, what I do is just come back through, trim the bottom of the skirt to the length that I like it. Um, if I'm making a jig for somebody, a lot of times I'll leave the skirts a little bit longer. That way they can trim them up the way they want. But if you can see, the tip of the hook is right here. I usually leave it like a quarter inch to maybe half inch past the end of the hook. And that's just where I like to run mine. Um, at this point, all that's left is the weed guard. You can see that hole in the top of the head, and we're going to put our weed guard in there, and I'll show you how we do that. Alright, so I like to use, if this will focus, I like to use a green pumpkin weed guard for all of my bluegill swim jigs. Um, I'm going to use super glue gel. Make sure you use the gel and not a regular liquid when doing this. And you're just going to put a little dot of gel right on the end of it. And you're going to take your jig, pull your skirt material back out of the way. And you're going to put that weed guard right into where that hole was. Make sure to push it down to where it seats all the way. And now you have a finished jig.
Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, like, subscribe, share the video with some friends. Um, let us know down below what you would like to see next. Do you want to see another jig video? Would you like to see some soft plastics? Uh, do you want to see some jig builds with some living rubber? It's a different type of material. Uh, it stands up a little bit more in the water. I am eventually going to get a tank so that I can do tank test and show you guys. Uh, yeah, let us know down below and hope you enjoyed. Thank you.